Welcome to a demonstration of testing timing in a data center. To the left here is a representation of a data center network with the GNSS reference timing coming into what we call the stratum one level and then distributed across the data centers with multiple clock stratum levels. We'll be using the Calnex Sentinel to make this measurement and all of these measurements for timing usually are with a reference and in this case we'll make the reference the either the stratum one of that data center network or in fact directly from the GNSS. Now the useful feature of the Calnex Sentinel product is that you can use the reference to discipline the built-in high quality rubidium and then you can use it in holdover mode with the required accuracy to move around a data center or even from one data center to the other. And the measurement we'll be making is of the PTP distributed across that data center. And this measurement can be either PTP or NTP at one gig or 10 gig rates, as well as one PPS output if available. And we can also make multiple of these measurements. Demonstration you'll see will show you a Sentinel product making a measurement in a data center of the PTP and the one PPS accuracy, which we call the time error. The Sentinel can have up to two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports for PTP and or NTP time error measurements. These ports can be utilized simultaneously with up to four ports of one PPS measurements. The Sentinel has a high quality Rubidium reference which is trained by GNSS utilizing the integrated multi-system GNSS receiver. In data centers, it is not always possible to make sync measurements in a location where GNSS is available. This issue is solved with the Sentinel by the use of a high quality rubidium. This rubidium has a holdover performance of 100 nanoseconds over 10 hours. This means that the Sentinel can be moved around the data center, measurements made without the need for a GNSS connection. A typical Measurement can be seen on this, this central screen. This is a PTP measurement that has been made simultaneously with a 1PPS measurement. The PTP measurement is a two-way time error, a maximum time error measurement. And in this case, we can see we have a maximum time error of minus 126, minus 127 nanoseconds. A 1PPS measurement can be seen by clicking this tab and as you can see now this yellow graph is our 1 PPS measurement. The Sentinel has been designed to allow it to be easily used both from a measurement and analysis and also a measurement setup. For measurement setup we have a cog here if I click that cog it will take us to the PTP setup page. The first thing you'll notice is that we have a profile so the profiles that are more defined, like the ITUT G8265 and G8275.x and IEEE 1588-2008 default profiles, uh, we can push click those and, they, and the Sentinel will be automatically set up. For the more open profiles such as the enterprise profile used in data centers, then we can freely define what we require. So we could we could be looking at UDP over IPv4, IPv6 or layer 2 Ethernet, multicast or unicast. I'll select unicast here and now we've got the ability to enter the IP address of the master clock. We also have the ability to define the message rates that we are going to use. And the Sentinel supports all message rates as up to the maximum message rate as defined in IEEE 1588. The other thing that we need to do is define the IP address of the Sentinel slave. This is defined in this port here, uh, this window here, and also any gateway that we need to get through to the master clock itself. Setting up the Ethernet media, so anything from 10 gig, 1 gig, or even 100 meg, we, we support with the Sentinel. The last page I want to show on, there, on this screen is the GNSS screen here, and you can see now these are the multi-system uh, that we support with GPS at the moment as the as the one that we've selected and the, and the uh, satellites that we're currently using to train the Rubidium. We also support multiple other systems 
and it is possible to use multiple systems at the same time so for example you could use GPS and Galileo if required. The Sentinel also has an API should you have automation of your synchronization measurements in your test center, in your data center. This allows for control of the instrument, allows the start and stop of the measurements and also the download of results that can be analyzed either by the CalNet analysis tool CAT or by your own analysis software. One of the key drivers for timing in data center is correlation in synchronization. In fact, timing has always been prevalent in data centers worldwide. This is because data centers and data are becoming more and more decentralized, distributed globally, and this data needs synchronization. Many systems in data centers are low cost and their internal oscillators need periodically corrected. A lot of data center services are charge services. Billing and charging relies on time stopping to correctly charge the customer and complete transactions. NTPD or Daemon, widely used, however, this presentation is about how this is changing. One of the drivers for change today is that data centers need more precise timing because more and more data is being generated in different locations. Data centers are becoming more and more distributed globally and decentralized throughout regional locations and data is being generated from a, a remote location and then centralized globally at a, at a central location. More and more computing is moving out of the data center and into the edge or edge computing. This data needs to be correlated. Synchronization becomes important because the better correlation one has, the less need for rewrite and bulk data transfer, which are costly actions in data centers. Therefore, better accuracy is equal to lower cost. Higher volume of transactions requires greater resolution that NTBD cannot offer. This becomes particularly important in finance and highly regulated industries. The better the resolution in high frequency transactions, for example, can mean an edge on competitors and more transactions. Timestamp accuracy is mandated by regulators. More transactions can mean more revenue for financial applications. There are also other drivers. Microbursting can be an expensive event to manage in the data center. The more accurately these events can be timestamped, the more accurately you can be sure of the cause of the event, allowing for better resource planning. Analytics needs to know the order of events in order to work correctly, and therefore accurate synchronization is required. A lot of 5G infrastructure will be moving into the data center. We already know that telecommunications rely on accurate timing to work. This will continue to be true for 5G infrastructure in data centers. So why is timing and synchronization in data centers now required? The fundamental reason for this is in the accuracy and precision of the requirement. For 100 milliseconds or one second of accuracy, testing is generally not required. Moving closer to one microsecond of accuracy, testing becomes essential as there is no way to guarantee that performance without testing. So why not just use GPS? Well, data centers do in fact use GPS as a source of time. However, it is very difficult to distribute GPS throughout a data center. Getting a GPS signal in is not easy, and this then needs to be distributed throughout often massive data centers. This is difficult to do and very expensive. In general, data center operators have deployed GPS, but have lots of issues with it, which is why NTP and PTP are much more reliable solutions for timing in data centers. Thank you for taking the time to listen and, and watch this presentation.